What is your definition of a smart building? Well, a smart building uh, is actually historically uh, been thought of as uh, a combination of uh, building automation and uh, telecommunications. The first mention of a smarter intelligent building was around 25 years ago when PCs came on uh, to the uh, marketplace. The telecommunication industry was uh, deregulated and some advances have been made in building automation. The, the smart building has several, uh, uses technology to enable several things, from a building owner and building management to be able to construct and operate the building more efficiently, from, for occupants and visitors, tenants, to be able to be more productive, be in a healthy environment, be safer, and so forth. What can a smart building do that conventional buildings cannot? Smart building uh, at a technical level is having systems tied to each other, integrated, and you get more functionality out of the systems and therefore better performance in the uh, buildings. You've been consulting in this area for decades. What have been the landmarks for your company and what would be a typical client for you? Uh, the landmarks uh, in terms of getting to designing all the buildings and the systems have been some of the major advancements in technology which have now enabled the, the uh, smart building really over the last five or six years. The clients we've been involved with have been uh, twofold, both new construction and existing buildings. We've been fortunate enough to work with uh, companies such as uh, Microsoft, Cleveland Clinic, major developers in Central America, uh, governments such as the Ministry of Higher Ed in Saudi Arabia. Now there is a preconception that smart buildings are not just more complex but more costly, is that correct? I don't believe that, I, I believe the uh, perception is uh, correct but the reality is slightly different. One of the things smart buildings does is to put the systems in more efficiently, recognizing the commonality that all the systems have cable, cable pathways, they need room, they need power, they need system administration terminals, so forth. If you can uh, recognize that, you can put the uh, systems in more efficiently and save some construction uh, dollars. It's similar to, I think, what is going on with uh, some of the green buildings where people have an idea that uh, there's a premium to be paid for uh, green buildings. Over time, it becomes part of the practice of architects and engineers and they really don't cost any more to, to produce. And that's an interesting point that you raise. Are smart buildings the same as green buildings? There is a uh, major overlap in the uh, two. The systems that uh, smart buildings are related to the air conditioning and ventilation system, the lighting system, the plug load and so forth. Those are the major energy consuming control systems they are both related to a green building and a smart building. Green is a little different in that it also deals with sustainability. So you, your interest is in recycling, materials, sustainable sites, and so forth. So what are the key technologies used in smart buildings? What has happened over the last uh, 10 or 12 years is that the infrastructure of a typical data network has penetrated other systems. We now have telephone systems which are basically network appliances on a data network. The same has happened to surveillance systems where cameras are now really network appliances on an IT network. And so you're starting to see the penetration of that IT infrastructure in each of the building systems at some level. What would you cite as examples of best practice in smart buildings? Uh, the, there's probably uh, three or four best practices I see. One is to actually know uh, from a consulting standpoint what the business and the building is being used for. The business owner may have financial objectives which uh, you have to take into consideration. Each building use is slightly different. There's going to be a common core of systems but you're going to have specialty systems for healthcare, education, commercial office buildings and so forth. The second thing is to be involved with the smart building approach very early in the uh, design, early participation. You also want to set expectations with the owner as to what's possible, what's practical, coordinate with the other design team members who may not have been involved with a uh, smart building uh, design and coordinate with them on, on their designs. 
And then finally, I think uh, we feel it's important if the focus, uh, which is sometimes difficult in new construction, is really on building operation. 75% of the life cycle cost of a building is in operations. There's many times during construction of a building where the focus is really on first cost, construction budget, and so forth. So if you take a longer term view of how the building should operate and perform, I think you'll um, be better off in the uh, long run. Where can we go for more information about smart buildings if we want to find out more about them? I think there's several sources. Uh, I would start here in the UK with the uh, University of Reading who has an educational program on intelligent buildings. There's organizations in North America, the Continental Automated Building Association, organizations in Asia, the Asia Intelligent Building Institute. There's a books. I'll, uh, I have a book out called The uh, Smart Building Systems for Architects, Owners, and Builders. There's uh, newsletters available. I think the idea of getting educated and being trained is uh, important in this arena. The, the focus on energy and green and sustainability in buildings has really transformed the way we're designing, constructing, and operating buildings. And part of that is a change in skill sets and knowledge uh, that is needed by building owners, designers, building management.